The world is on fire. People are losing their minds every day, man. I'm telling you, we are living in a... If you didn't think that the world was a simulation before, my God, you're, there's a rude awakening coming your way. I was having a wonderful conversation with my buddy yesterday. We were talking about just uh, society right now and the way that people are interfacing with the world or their lack of interfacing with the world. And he come, <laughs> he, he starts the conversation off just so pissed off, just so mad, rightfully so, about traffic and people. And it wasn't just about traffic. It was about people. There's a trend right now in this world, maybe just this country, but just all together, there's a trend right now to take as much of the ability that you have to think critically about subject matter and toss it to the wind toss it so far to the wind that you can never obtain it again it's like the idea of thinking through things just doesn't it's not it's not in the line of sight of anybody nobody trusts anybody scientists for some reason have become the enemy of the state the government is nobody trusts the government Everybody is has skeptical glasses on when it comes to the government. Rightfully so. We we get upset when we get free money. You know, we get six hundred dollar checks, and then we get pissed off that we're getting six hundred dollars. And we pull up comparisons of other countries like Switzerland or you know Thailand, uh, Thailand or South Korea, where they're paying their people two thousand dollars you know, a, uh, a month or whatever, $10,000 a year or whatever it is, but not realizing, but, but forgetting to think critically, forgetting to think logically about what is, why, why do these places get paid more than we do? What, what does a population number have to do with anything? Is there a reason why maybe they're getting paid more? You know, is it maybe the size of the country are they not getting unemployment? Is it is it not a one? Do they not get one time payments? Like what is it? Uh, it's just it's a the lack of education right now. I think, and we we talked about it right. We talked about why do why is it that everywhere you go, people are so defiant against something, and 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 under this illusion that everything that they're told is a lie, and everything that is you know, pretty, pretty hard science, like, uh, this vaccine, like, why is this vaccine continuously getting tied into conspiracy theories? Why are people continuously spreading information, information, disinformation, saying that the vaccine is extremely dangerous, saying that the vaccine is this, the vaccine is that? No, what the vaccine is, is it's a, it's, it's a 95% effective fluid, essentially, that you put into your body and it reduces the chance that you get coronavirus. It's not a tracking device that the government's putting inside your brain. Why would they do that? They already track people with the Apple watch on your wrist, with the phone in your pocket. They're not trying to create a, a, a world full of sheep. You refusing to follow the rules doesn't make you more of an alpha male than the person next to you. It, it, it just doesn't do it. You giving the poor lady at the 7-Eleven who's making minimum wage, you giving her a hard time because you don't want to wear a mask because you are not, quote, part of the herd. You lead the herd. Man, you, you're not doing anything. You're not changing the world. You're not making the world a better place. You look like an idiot. So many people look like idiots right now. Taking these stances on things that they have no professional uh, knowledge on whatsoever. Saying that the coronavirus is fake, but we all know somebody who's gotten the coronavirus. We all know somebody, not all of us, but we all know somebody who knows somebody who passed away from coronavirus. 
And then people love to say how, well, the coronavirus is not, it, 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 when people die of it, it's not a direct death. Cool, I get it, awesome. But when people die, there's never a direct reason of death. If we want to play that game, we can play the game that every single death is heart failure because that's what it is. But there's things that induce heart failure, like obesity, like eating too much food, like having cholesterol that's too high, like being diabetic or contracting coronavirus that will put a heavy, heavy burden on your immune system. Therefore, you're, you, you're, you have a weaker and lower chance to survive if you get sick by anything else or the coronavirus will kill you. We're not experts. There's a few experts in this world, and the experts are scientists. And scientists are trying to be the best that they could possibly be. They're not all contracted by the government. They're not all trying to make this world order. The people that do this, the people that spout out this information, they're not knowledgeable. They're just not intelligent people. This is so important for people to realize the ability to disguise yourself as a smart person, but actually being a dumb person, the ability to do that is at an all time. It's, it's a pandemic level. It's a pandemic level. We all have a family member who is on social media all day, just spouting out the most crazy things, taking quotes, taking pictures from former world leaders and just praising people like they're gods. But these people could not get through an algebra class. These people could not read a book and actually try to figure out what the book is about. These people can't spell their names. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying that that makes them a bad person. I, I, I'm aware of the education disport, the disparity in this country that most people don't have the access to a good education. But what I am saying is that there's so much nonsense going around. Everybody wants to be a doctor. Everybody wants to bust open this the, 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 the case and be like, oh, it's all fucking conspiracy here. Like, it's just, it's driving me crazy. If I had to hear one more person, poor person say that the coronavirus vaccine doesn't work and that the coronavirus vaccine is like, Somehow a government operative that wants to like track you, wants to see like the way your brain functions or whatever the crazy shit that's going on out there that the coronavirus is hooked up to 5G network. Like if I have to hear any of that stuff one more time, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's just, it's gotten to the point now where so many non-experts are acting like they're experts. And the reason why that even the experts don't know much about coronavirus, they know a lot more than the average person, but it's because we've never had to deal with it before, right? I mean, we still argue to this day how the world was created, and we've been trying to figure that out for thousands and thousands of years, you know? Like, you, you, you have to give a level of trust to certain people, certain groups of people. Pfizer is a company that is trying to make a coronavirus vaccine to make money. But in the process, the scientists are trying to develop a coronavirus vaccine for the same reason why an NBA superstar tries to win the NBA championship. Because it's what they it's what they do. It's their profession. It's what these people do. And like it's so crazy to me to think that there's somebody out there who is piecing up a video, a flat earth theory video. And and on the other side of the country, there's somebody who's putting together the last molecules for Johnson and Johnson to 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 you know uh, make sure the vaccine rolls out. Like it's just there's and just there's so much information going around that's just not true, and it's just it's chaos, dude. And we were just having a conversation. We were just we we were just appalled, you know. We were just appalled by the things that people say, the things that people do. The, uh, and I, I think, I think, honestly, I think the biggest issue with it all is the phone, man. It's the phone. Not just for the social media aspect, but for the aspect of, here, here's an example. 
So when I was younger, I was like 12, 13, 14, 15 years old. If I was 15, that would have been, what, nine years ago, 2011. So this was right around the time social media, I think, was out. Facebook, I think, came out in like 2008, 2009. But social media was out. But it wasn't out in the sense that it was easy to use. Like the internet on your phone wasn't like easy to use. Um, I wasn't really using it for any other reason. I may not even have had like a iPhone. I probably or smartphone. I probably still just had a uh, like a Samsung Glide or you know uh, just a regular flip phone or slide phone. Um, and I'm I'm definitely getting to the point now where I feel I can I can my age I can feel. There's times where I'm like, yeah, I'm old <laughs> because I think people who are you know, 17 years old right now, they never, they've always had an iPhone. Like a phone is not a flip phone. It's, it's a touchscreen phone. Like I remember when the first touchscreen phones came out, like the, the delay time from when you clicked a button was like, it was literally like a quarter of a second, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it is, uh, it's, it wasn't frustrating at the time, but if we picked up a phone now with a touchscreen like that, we would uh we would all be losing our, our minds. We would all be pissed off. We would all be throwing our phones. We would all be trying to upgrade our dial time. Um, but I remember I would ask people things, and I would ask my parents things, and you know you would get answers. You would you would get answers from authority. You would get answers from your parents about you know what whatever like what's the capital of Mississippi or you know what's uh what's this times this or uh what was the year that uh. King George the first declared war on whatever it's Spain. I'm just, I'm completely making that up. And someone would say, blah, 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 1468 or whatever. And you kind of just took that at face value, right? You, you took it, you, you ran away with it. You're like that 1458. I because you, that was a person you were asking for an answer. And the answer that you got was the, was better than what you thought. But now that I was walking away, I'm 13 years old. My dad says 1458 or whatever. Well, I was expecting him him to say like 1288, not 1458. I was expecting 1288 because because for some reason I thought that we were out of the medieval times by 1458. So I'm walking away. Do 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 do. My big fat belly just just waddling away. I'm like, okay, well, well that doesn't make sense. okay. Well. Maybe we were in medieval times. I don't I don't know, were we? But didn't they discover a sword like then they dated it back to like like eleven hundred? Like eleven thousand like I don't I don't know if he was right. Maybe maybe he is totally right and I'm I'm completely wrong. But you would do this for a few hours, even a few minutes, few a few hours, maybe a day or two, and then you would have to look it up, you know, you would have to go to the computer. Like even that would be a more challenge than just going to your phone and you, but in the process, you're critically thinking about the the thing you're learning how to come to the answer. You're not just, uh, you're not just looking to prove him wrong and you're actually taking what he says or she says, and you're trying to, you're trying to rationale. What, what, what did you previously think? Why do they think that? So you're trying to figure out why do they think that? I think this. Why do they think that? I want to know that. I want to know the difference. It's not really about the answer, but it's about why do I think this? Why am I wrong? Well, that doesn't exist anymore. You know, like I couldn't imagine being a teacher in this day and age, like sitting in class with a bunch of middle school kids and high school kids and you say something, you do something. And I don't know how it was, but when I went to school, it was no phones in class. But by the time I was graduating high school, it was like no phones in class. Um, but I'm not really going to say too much if I see you with the phone because if 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 I had a if the teacher actually had to enforce that policy, there would be nobody left in class because everyone would be kicked out for being on the phone, and then the teacher would be on the phone, and then the prince would be on the phone, and just be hypocrisy everywhere, and the whole high school would fall apart. But um. Yeah, like like now when you sit in class, the moment you say something like, I don't know, like Pluto is still a planet. Like everybody is immediately trying to prove you wrong. They're immediately trying to say, nope, that's not true. And they're immediately going to the phone. Like we don't take wrong things and try to critically dissect them 
not to get the right answer, but to figure out why it was wrong. Maybe it was just a human error, but maybe it was maybe what they were actually the answer they gave was relative to another topic. So in the process of finding the ant the real answer, the right answer to the original question, you can figure out a secondary answer to a, a secondary question. Um so I think that has a lot to do with it. I think also a lot of people right now are there's a lot of um there's a lot of uh I deserve um I'm privileged here. Like this is I deserve this. Right, like you're seeing this a lot with like the checks, the stimulus checks, and it's Thursday, and I'm and I, I'm pretty sure the stimulus checks already went out, and if they do pass two thousand dollars, and everyone's gonna get an additional fourteen hundred dollars, and it's weird because it's free money. No one's gonna say no to free money. I'm not gonna say to free money. It would be nice to get two thousand dollars, right? Um, it, you 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 cannot spend that money. I don't. I've had this. I've had the conversation both ways. I've had people say that, yes, this is free money. This won't be taxed. But I don't, I just don't ever feel like the government is ever giving out money for free. I don't think money is free. I think even loans are free money, but you got to pay back the loans. Like there's interest on it. I just don't see how all this money that's been given out, they're not going to ask for it back. Like I I really do think they're going to ask for it back. And maybe not. Maybe, maybe they're just going to give us money, and they and it, stimu- it stimulates stimulates the economy. Hence, stimulus check, which I think a lot of people are disconnected. They don't understand what the stimulus check is. Um, but, but I think people people were upset when it was six hundred dollars because they think they deserve more money. And the truth is, you don't deserve it, any money, right? Like, and and I think that's that's a really that's a harsh thing to say, but. The fact that our 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 government is even siphoning off any money at all to give to people is incredible. The real money is when the unemployment checks come in, and people are making an additional three hundred dollars a paycheck, for for four times a month. I mean that's uh that's that's twelve hundred dollars right there a month, and let's just say you make. Your forty percent of your regular paycheck is six hundred dollars. That's nine hundred dollars four times a month. Eighteen thirty six hundred dollars you're making in a month, and that's another scary aspect of all. And, I, and with everything going on, this is even a scarier thing to think about. Which I don't think. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if I want to see that. That's uh, that's crazy. I'm going to have to watch that. But I, I don't think people really uh, fully grasp. Fuck, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, the the consequences of rewarding people for not having a job. And I get it. There's a lot of people who had a job, and they had no power when they lost a job. They lost a job. They had no choice. But And I also just understand that the market right now, is it's hard to find a job. But I worry that the long-term effects of this of this increased amount of money that's just going out to people and going out to people, yeah, people say, well, the money's going to run out. They're going to stop giving away money. Yeah, but people are still going to be asking for it because it's going to get to the point where people are, feel like it's 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 a right that they have, that money's a right to, to them. And I don't think money's a right to anybody. Working, the, the ability to make money is a right. But making a certain amount of money is not a right. But having the ability to go out and finding a stream of revenue is your right to do that. It's also not your right, though, to land every job that you apply for. And I think that's a very important thing for people to to grasp. Um, And I also think that the ultimate way to make money is to learn how, how to deal with money. What is... There's not just... Making and spending. There's making and spending, investing and saving, and all those things are correlate to a higher net worth. Right? So, but when you're rewarding people with just an excess amount of money, it's uh, it's not a good thing. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. But I want to get off of that topic. I want to... Um, I want to see this video of Mike Tyson casually four grams of mushrooms on Logan Paul. See, this is why he shouldn't be doing this stuff. That's, uh, he, oh, 
Oh my god, it's ten minutes, or it's an hour twenty one. I'll watch the podcast later. Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson catches a four grams of mushrooms on Logan Paul's impulsive podcast. Mike Tyson's appearance on Logan Paul's podcast was a wild one with the boxing legend eating a handful of mushrooms at the start of the episode. Avid marijuana enthusiast Tyson was smoking joint to begin with, but then followed up by chew by casually chewing through around four, ca- chewing through around four or five grams of mushrooms. He was handed by impulsive co-host Mike. It was five minutes in the podcast, and Iron Mike shoved in far more than usual intake. Oh, I hate that feeling. For your average Joe, and didn't even stop to drink some water. Jesus Christ. When discussion turned to the potential for the legality for mushrooms, Tyson said he believes it's going to be the best thing in the 21st century, and taking them helps me be a better me. It's fascinating how he was like if you watch the uh the 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 Rogan podcast the first one he did with him he was super calm he was just like a very uh uh zaned zoned he was very zened out he was a very happy person he was smoking a lot of weed he seemed calm he seemed like he had control of his emotions like Mike Tyson's a killer like this guy was developed to be a kill like his job was to kill people with his hands like and he was really good at it, so it, it it was like the perfect combo for a dude to just lose his mind. <clears throat> like um, every time someone would tell me things like uh, like oh he lost all his money or he was like he was like a bad person. I'm like yeah, well he was he was des- he was a machine. He was designed to break people's skulls. He was designed to kill people with his right and left fist. Like, no wonder he there was at times where he would buy a tiger irresponsibly. Or no wonder there was a time where he might have pushed a, uh, a I don't know, a, I'm assuming he pushed paparazzi. Or the time he told that guy he was going to eat his babies. Like, no wonder. The dude was, he was, he was, he, he, he's a little off his rocker. <laughs> he's a little off his rocker. He then confirmed he trains after taking mushrooms and may have taken some a few days before he returned to the ring for the first time in 15 years. Well, he took some to fight. Uh, the 54-year-old then began to discuss other psychedelics such as DNT and, and ganja and experiences dabbling into the substances. In fact, he's going on record to state that it was his consuming a psychedelic named the toad, <laughs> extracted from a rare species of toad from the Sonoran Desert in America, that led to his incredible weight loss and subsequent boxing comeback. Oh my. Well, this is going to be fun. Uh, he said, I took this medicine and the medicine told me to get into shape. Tyson said during the weigh-in ahead of the Staples Center exhibition. It really blew my mind. It told me to come back and start getting in shape. It said that the drug, which is far more powerful than the DMT, causes religious-like trip where users feel their state of consciousness altered in the space of five minutes. On the podcast, Tyson described how taking these drugs made him feel, likening likening it to seeing the sun open up. Whoa. Not the sun coming up. But the sun opening up. Like the inside of the sun just peering. That's a that's a wild wild uh, way to say you your experience with with a certain drug. Uh, it should be noted that the whole conversation wasn't just about Tyson experimenting with drugs. He talked about his upbringing and now and how he was arrested forty times before he was twelve years of age. Forty times, forty times, and this is why you can never people people say don't judge somebody. But then they judge somebody so quickly. I mean, how the fact that this guy is in dead or in jail is like astonishing. I mean, the only the only way this guy could survive is if he could figure out a way to um to beat the living shit out of somebody with his fist and not go to jail. And he did. That's what boxing was for him. His Hall of Fame boxing career was, of course, a key topic, but the two-time world heavyweight champion told Paul exactly what he thought regarding his transition into the squared circle. The Maverick takes on Floyd Mayweather in a super exposition fight in February 
And when asked for his prediction right in front of Paul, Tyson said Floyd's going to beat his fucking ass. But it's going to be good. It's going to be good. He's going to fight back, though. <laughs> oh, man. I love Mike Tyson. Dude's so honest. <laughs> the most honest guy. The most honest guy this world has ever seen. Just kidding. Probably not the most honest, but I would also hate to be like family. Probably a fucking disaster, dude. Um, there was, whoa. Oh, yeah. Quick thing I just want to go over real quick. So, for Christmas, I did get two sharks. So, uh, my girlfriend got me two little baby sharks. I guess they're technically carp. Um, I guess they're technically carp, but I don't know. I went to the Petco place, and I was talking to Taylor. I was like, oh, it would be so cool to have sharks, and I guess... Or I was like, do they have any sharks here? And the guy was like, oh, there's sharks right here. And I looked at him, and I was like, uh, I guess there's are sharks. <laughs> um, uh, but then the guy, then I guess Taylor overheard that, and she went ahead and bought me two sharks for Christmas. Um, I have not named them yet. And the reason why I haven't named them is because I wanted to learn more about them. So I wanted to watch them. I want to watch them swim. They're going to get to about six inches big. So I just want to experiment with them, see what they do. And immediately, once I saw them, I could already see the hierarchy taking place. There's one, there's one, there was one shark. There was one. <laughs> Just gave it away. There was a shark and he was the aggressor. He would continuously chase the other one around. If the other one tried to get food, he would not let him get food. The dude had like a hole in his fin and, um, and I was like, yeah, oh, that's weird. Like, so then I, then I gave them rocks to kind of have like a place to hang out. So they didn't like, because they're territorial and I don't, I think maybe the guy told her to get two, but I feel like getting two is kind of weird. I don't know. Maybe, I mean, what do I know? But, um, they, they, uh, they, they did, they did that for a little while. A week went by and, uh, as of Wednesday, I went to the tank, and I opened up the tank and the one fish was the one shark was dead. He he didn't make it. Um, he he didn't die from a pH imbalance or anything because the other fish is fine swimming around doing his thing. But uh, the one shark, I guess, was just lower on the hierarchy. And the other shark was just like, "Hey man, you're not eating. You didn't let him eat. Like he did not let him eat every time he tried to eat." So I think the one shark just like literally starved to death. It's sad. It's a bummer. But I do have one shark left. Uh, and I was told to maybe introduce another shark, but make sure it's a bigger shark. Uh, but that was kind of like big news I wanted to tell you guys. So I, I want to put them on the podcast, but I have no place to really put them on the show. Uh, but they're in the other room, there's a little light in the, in the, in the, in the fish tank and he's awesome and he's a killer. I mean, he's a savage. He literally killed the other shark. Uh, he didn't kill him directly, but he didn't let him, let him eat either. So I guess that is a form of. That's kind of, uh, that's like Joseph Stalin way of killing. You know, you just starve him out. Um, but I didn't want to name him because I didn't want to become connected to him because I knew that one just wasn't, uh, he wasn't, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't, he wasn't kicking ass for lack of better terms. He, he didn't look like he was going to uh, win. He didn't look like he was going to win. But, um, yeah, so I have a shark now. The strangest medical cases of 2020, two days ago. Here's a look at the news. Green urine. Whoa, what is that about? Having the strangest medical cases of 2020. A number of intriguing medical cases caught our eye, our eye this year. It's the time of the year, man. Oh, shit. You know what? You know what I just realized? You know, I just realized this is the last episode of 2020. What am I doing? Why am I talking about science? Um, this is the last episode of 2020. This is it. This is it. Um, I'm going to spend the last 10 minutes of this podcast just saying thank you for every... I, I literally forgot that this is going to be the last episode because this episode is going to go up on the 31st, um, so this is New Year's Eve, um, 
Happy New Year's Eve to everybody. Uh, happy, I mean, thank you. I, I don't even know where to start. This year for me has been, uh, and I don't want this to come off as unsens- insensitive, and I don't want this to come off as like, uh, you know, because a lot of people didn't are not doing well this year. You know, a lot of people are struggling a lot this year. A lot of people lost their jobs. A lot of people lost a house. A lot of people lost family members. A lot of people uh, lost control of the mental Ill, the mental health. A lot of people lost a good therapists. A lot of people lost a lot of things. And now what I'm about to say even makes me feel like more of a dickhead. But um, this has been a great year for me, you know. And I think I think it's even though it's been a shitty year for a lot of people, I do think I, I still believe that there was a lot of good that happened even for the people where a lot of shit happened uh be, you know pre-2020 there was you know people were not there was a lot of angry humans they didn't like their jobs they didn't like their relationships they didn't like like where they were in life they didn't like their spending habits they didn't like this they didn't like the way they looked the weight um and you and it was always easy to blame well i have to do it i'm in the rat race you know i gotta keep making money whatever 2020 allowed it forced a lot of people to grab a mirror and look at it and i think there was a huge divide of those people who grabbed the mirror and ran away with it and and refused to look at it and um and continued down the path of just spiraling uh, but i think there's a lot of people who looked at the mirror and they looked at the person like i don't like that person who is that person becoming don't like I don't like my job. I don't really like the person I'm with. I don't really like the way I look. Um, like I have bad saving habits. I don't have any money. In my savings account. I'm I get a check and I I, I get nervous and I spend it and I just kind of dig myself a hole. And I think this year, for me specifically, I've taken this year. I, this has been the greatest year of my life. <laughs> and it sounds terrible, but it's I, I got back into school and when I got back into it, I. I, mean, I was already into it, but I I knocked out a whole year of school. I have one year left. Um, this time next year, I'm gonna be graduated. If you guys don't think I'm having a, a graduation party on the podcast, you guys are crazy. I'm just kidding. I may I probably won't. But um, yeah. So I got I made another more progress with school. Um, I learned I learned the value of money. Like I really did. I learned the value of money. What does it mean to invest? What does it mean to save? How do you save? What's the debt to income ratio? How much money do I need to actually survive? Um, I I learned how to not make money, but how to manage money. Um, and I've I'm making I've made huge strides on that. Like I've I've increased my my net worth like tenfold just from those little things. Um, I've taken this podcast. I don't I don't know how many. I don't know if I can even look this up. I might be able to. I think I just want to kind of get like a quick. I'm gonna see what my last podcast was of twenty. Of twenty, uh, my first podcast was of twenty twenty. Uh, Jan- December. Okay, so January seventh, episode fifty four was my first podcast of this year. So that means we've done a hundred. This is going to be episode 153, so we've done a hundred. We've done 99 episodes this year, which is amazing. We've basically done a hundred. Let's just say we've done a hundred episodes this year on the podcast. Um, it it went from getting you know a couple hundred downloads a month to pulling in thousands of downloads a month, multiple thousand if you add in my YouTube channel too. Um, I've 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 been able to. Uh, I started running, you know, I've gotten physical in like decent physical shape, confident physical shape, like a shape where I know I can maintain. Um, I've learned a healthy way of eating, like a healthy lifestyle way of eating. Um, I've, I've just been able to anything that I, I was anything that was easy for me to just ignore because the world was moving at such a fast pace. I got slapped in the face and I realized I had to fix it. And uh, 2020 was a great year. It honestly was, you know, we've, we've learned a lot about people. I think, you know, when you see kids like uh, in recess and they have so much energy, so much energy, but they're sitting in the cafeteria getting ready to go outside. Like this was the recess year. This was a year where everybody lost their minds. They had a crazy, they, 
People were angry, mad. A lot of things came to the surface, but I think this year also is going to lead to a lot of tying of the knots. Um, tying of the knots going into 2021. I think 2021 is going to be a good year. I think it's going to be a good year. I don't think it's going to be as crazy as people say it is. I think as long as people get the vaccine and as long as we, you know, I think we're going to be fully, you know, Fauci says around 70% is what we need to get back to like a normal life. Who am I not to believe him? It's Dr. Fauci. He's a smarter guy than I am. He's been around since the AIDS pandemic. Like he was a big supporter of that or a big proponent of getting that shit in check. Not a supporter. I don't think anyone was supportive of the AIDS pandemic. Do imagine that. Imagine coronavirus, but like actually kills you with a pretty much almost like a hundred percent chance. And it's frowned upon to even be gay. Like do AIDS was, if you got AIDS, you died pretty much. Uh, you couldn't really talk about it because gay people weren't like, you know, they weren't accepted yet. And you don't, and for the longest time, there was just so much disinformation going around about how you got it. And even when they knew you, and then when you knew that you got it, you didn't want to talk about it because then you'd be outcast from your whole family. And people just died and no one ever spoke about them. Like that shit is wild, man. That shit is wild. But, uh, you know, it really was. It was a good year, man. It was a good year. I, I learned a lot of lessons. Um, I, this was a year where I think there's always a time, is that a bird? No, it's a leaf. There's always a time in someone's life where they have that year where they have to set up for the future. And there's progress, but the progress isn't crazy. But you start building the foundation for a lot of things. And that was this year. 2020 was that year for me. Every Everywhere from finances to the relationship to um, my physical health to my mental health, to my emotional being, um, to the way that I view the world. You know, I'm such a happier person now than I ever was. Like 2019, 2018, 2017, I was just angry. I don't know what I was angry about. I don't think I was confident as a person. I don't think the things I believed is what I actually believed. I think I just believed the things I was told to believe. Uh, but this year and through the, you know, look at all these, I mean, I've read, I don't know, man, i Sure, I can look this up. I have the amount of books I've read this year. I feel, I feel like I um, I know everything. Just kidding. I know nothing. But I've read... I'm going to pull up some of the books I've read this year. Oh, there we go. The 2020... So my, my 2020 reading challenge was 15 books. That's what I wanted to do. I've read 25 books this year. 26 books, actually. Which doesn't sound like a lot, but the books were... You know, they're harder... You know, they're not like super easy books to read. So, like, I started the year off with... Um, Neuro Tribes, The Legacy of Autism in the Future Neurodiversity. Beautiful book. It was an astonishing book. Um, actually, I might get that guy on the podcast, Steve Silverman. Uh, Dave Robson, The Intelligence Trap. Good book. Uh, Permanent Record by Edward Snowden. Brain on Fire. Why We Sleep in Matthew Walker. Lifespan. Uh, Americana, which was uh, Chamanda Naguzi Adichie. That was a beautiful book about an African um girl coming into America and experiencing America from the view of an African uh, woman. It was, it was a beautiful book. Uh, Maps of Meaning, The Architecture of Belief by Jordan Peterson. That book might have been the pivotal point of my life right there uh, because I've always thought I knew how to think and how to believe things, but I didn't actually know the architecture of a belief. Um, and I'm, that's why I'm Super excited for uh, Jean Parasite being in nothingness, which is an existential uh, book. But this is a hard book to read. And I have like the Gulag, this is like an 800 page book. And I still have like the Gulag Archipelago to read, uh, Carnivore Core Cure, and um, uh, classes in society, uh, classes in school about how social classes impact education. Um, Animal Farm by George Orwell. Rich Dad, Poor Dad, uh, What the Rich Teach Their Kids About Money That the Poor and Middle Class Do Not. That book, One Up on Wall Street, they changed my finances forever. I've had beautiful conversations with amazing people. Uh, Chaos, Charles Manson, The CIA, and the Secrets uh, History of the 60s by Tom O'Neill. Dragons of Eden by Carl Sagan. Empire of the Summer Moon. I had that Indian kick I went on, or Native American kick. Beautiful book. Uh, the Joys of Compounding, I try to reach out to that guy to get on my show, but he did not respond. Uh, that book was amazing for learning what compounding is and how it can change your life. Blueprint, How DNA Makes Us Who We Are, The Righteous Mind, Crushing It, 
Um, the Righteous Mind by Jonathan Haidt was just an astonishing book because it 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 explains the world that we live in right now. Uh, Crushing It by Gary Vaynerchuk is an okay book. Uh, 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. Anything by Yuval Noah Harari is beautiful. The Color of Law, that's the guy. I am going to have that guy on the podcast, Richard Rothstein. I, I think I've hinted that before, but he's going to come on. Uh, Post Office by Charles Bukowski, just a fun book. Fun as in, I might be crazy if you've read that book and you're like, that's fun, that's crazy. Um, the Psychology of Money, Morgan Housel, be, uh, astonishing book. Carnival Code, Change My Health, Denial of Death, Change the Way I Think About Death. Food of the Gods, allowed me to appreciate drugs more. <laughs> Just like, it was a good year. It was a good year. And um, yeah, it's over though. You know, it's all, it's all in 2021, you know. I think there's a lot more lessons coming out this year than people give the year credit for. Um, but for me, uh, for 2021, all I want to do is keep saving money, um, keep working, um, g- graduate school. That's a huge one. Um, maybe get the podcast to 250 episodes. Maybe by the end of the year, have my, my own office space. Uh, definitely going to have my own apartment, uh, most likely. Um, but just setting up a future, right? So that's that. Uh, but yeah, guys, thank you so much. I can't do any of this without the support of my viewers and my listeners and my subscribers and anybody who shows me love anyway, financially or even just, you know, saying something in person, liking it, subscribing to it, commenting on it. Uh, it means the world and I can't do it without you guys. But uh, that's it, guys. Episode 153 of the Michael Lab Show. Last episode of 2020 is now over and um, I'll see you guys next year in January. I don't I don't know, January, whatever, 4th, whatever, 5th, who cares. But I'll see you guys when I see you, and uh, thank you thank you so much for the continued support of the show. Like I said, I can't, I, I couldn't ever imagine that the show would be where it is. I would have never, I would have never guessed that I could ever get the show to the size that it is. And it's not even that big yet. It's just keep, but it just keeps growing, and that's why it's, uh, that's why it's addicting. Uh, But love you guys so much. Thank you for always showing me support. I'm going to go ahead and shower, edit up this podcast, and I'll catch you guys guys next year in January 2021. Peace out. See you. Have a beautiful rest of your year. Be safe tonight. Enjoy your night. Um, Watch out for idiots on the road, but just be safe. Get home to your loved ones in one piece.